Hello, I want to talk about these two revolvers here. Um, we have the, this has been on my channel a couple of times, or at least once. Um, the Ruger Red Hawk, Lipsy's exclusive, 44 Magnum. And this is the Smith & Wesson Model 629 No Dash. Which means that this guy here is the same gun Dirty Harry had. Or at least is on the posters, with the only difference being that this is stainless steel. I know I have it polished, so it kind of looks like it's nickel, but um, this is just a what I feel like is a more rust resistant. You don't have to worry about the finish wearing off. Good old stainless steel. That's why I like it. Um, both of these guns have been safety checked. The only thing that's in either one of them is snap caps. And speaking of that, this is what you're looking at with the old style Smith & Wesson recessed cylinders. Which the only gun in modern day America that has recessed cylinders is the Kimber K6S series. Which you have seen on my channel before that I have long traded for my Model 60. Now this is the Ruger Red Hawk, the non-recessed cylinders, and you can see how it kind of sticks out. I think this has a much more clean look, and I do prefer the looks of the Smith & Wesson recessed cylinder. <clears throat> um... With the Ruger Red Hawk, this is the accuracy I was able to get off of it. Um, granted, I kind of need to sight it in a bit more. Because I only, I only had six rounds that I could sight in with it. But I was able to get this group here at 25. And then I changed it a little bit. And this was done after an entire day of shooting... Sight radius is only 4.2 inches, you know, whatever excuses I can come up with, but for a camping gun that is meant to defend against bears, I'm, I'm okay with this. If I practiced a lot more with this, I could probably do a lot better, but this was on this particular day what I was able to do. And I know that at, at 20 yards, I can issue a steel plate and do very well with it. I have video of me shooting two 44 special, two uh, moderate loaded 44 magnums, and two full power load 44 magnums. Please uh, check out the video of me shooting this. All right, again, all that's in here is snap caps. Uh, double action on this is about eight and a half to nine pounds. And it does stack, like I can feel there are certain spots where it's heavier than others. Um, there's basically a, there's essentially a, a hill that you need to get over. A lot of pressure, a lot of pressure, and then almost no pressure. Single action is heavier than the Smith & Wesson, um, with it being about three to four pound single action but it does not feel like it in the hands it really doesn't um this is magnaported or quadruported by magnaport i put uh the fiber optic sights on this and i'm very happy with this uh this was available from 2016 through the beginning of 2020 and then after that they have pretty much disappeared um if you find one of these get it and keep it because it's a highly collectible item now all right let's go into the smith and wesson Sorry, excuse me, working with one hand. Um, 
this was my very first shot I took it out today today was my first time shooting it I didn't have somebody that was able to record me shooting it but first three shots with 44 special um, 10 yards that's probably that's about an inch and a half group at 10 yards um, freehand no rest and so that's really awesome and then I did my first three rounds of 44 Magnum on this and that's that group right there 10 yards then I did uh, 25 yards 44 Magnum and got this group and then I brought it back to 10 yards and I did this group and that's about all I had time to do um, that's that's really not bad for a revolver that is was lightly used and is you know 40 years old it was made between 79 and 83 So this was only made for a few years itself. You know, about the same length of time as, as the Ruger Ellipses exclusive. But you can still find a few of these on the used market on Gunbroker. And again, I got snap caps on here. Uh, the double action is a little bit heavier than the Ruger. But the way it feels, there's a little bit of pressure to get the cylinder... Uh, cylinder stop out of its little nook and cranny there and then it just it's so smooth it's so consistent uh, other things I like about it is the fact it has the connection to Dirty Harry that it does it has the pin barrel the recessed cylinders. I love that it has the red ramp still. I love that you can take these stainless steel revolvers and really make them your own. You can get them as polished as you want. You can really work on the triggers as much as you want. There's just so much that you can do to make it yours. And then you get to pass it down to family. Um, I'm going to show you the single action. The single action is vastly lighter than the Ruger, and it does feel like it. It does feel like it. Not that the single action on the Ruger is bad, because it works. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. But, I mean, you get on this trigger, and you, you better make sure you're already pointing at whatever you want to shoot at. Um, when I measured the single action pull, it was at about two pounds. So four pounds, two pounds. But the double action on this when I measured it was at about nine, nine and a half pounds. This is about eight and a half, sometimes pushing nine pounds. So it's a noticeable difference. Um, but is the, the, what am I trying to say? The double action is a lot harder to notice the difference other than how the triggers feel on the finger. This is a very narrow trigger and it, the trigger has to come back so far that it, it kind of pinches the finger when you pull it. This has a wider target style type of trigger and it's very smooth and it does not pinch the finger. But it's a slightly heavier. Like You'd have to pull it back to back to notice the difference. Um, another difference is the weight. Because of how beefy the strap and the cylinder and everything is, there's a lot of heft. It's kind of front heavy. Um, it's actually less front heavy than this, even though this has the 8 and 3 8 barrel. Um, this actually just feels a lot more balanced. <clears throat> I think because of that and because of how the grips on a Ruger kind of slopes back more and you don't have as much of a hill, 
you know, a metal, a metal wall to slam into your hand. This actually feels a lot more comfortable handling every kind of recoil that you can throw into it. And this will handle every kind of 44 Magnum ammo you can throw in it. The, for, the Smith & Wessons are a little bit different. They will handle standard factory, factory ammo that's not, you know, Buffalo Bore plus P plus ammo. This will shoot just the standard stuff. I would just stay away from Buffalo Bore and I'd be very cautious with uh, what kind of Underwood ammo you shoot out of this. But um, the recoil impulse, impulse on this is a lot different because you you basically just have this almost completely straight wall of metal slamming back into you. But because of these grips that make it wider, it is a lot more comfortable than the new 4-inch uh, Model 29s with the Altamont grips on them. This is a lot more comfortable than that. And I mean a lot, lot more comfortable than that. Anyway, um, I'm really glad to have these pieces of history. Um, some of them have, you know, this one has a lot more sentimental value. This one is a, you know, it makes me super giddy to own a piece of history. And it gives me a connection to... You know, Detective, Detective Callahan, it gives me a uh, a connection to Elmer Keith. Gives me connection to the handgun hunting world. And it's just a timeless, you know, it's a piece of, of history. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. And hopefully I will get some better quality ones that, you know, maybe I can get somebody to hold the camera while I discuss, discuss this stuff for you. And other than that, I hope you enjoy any questions or concerns or anything. Just, uh, just let me know.